funniest thing um, for me that I, I think I, I still struggle with is when somebody asks me what I do for a living. Um, I, even though I've been a full-time artist for six years now, um, I, I, I find it so difficult and I feel so uncomfortable saying the words, I am an artist. Um, I think the imposter syndrome uh, seeps in um, quickly with me. And I, I don't know why I find it difficult to say, but I do. It, it, sometimes I think it stems from the fact that I don't come from a fine art background. Um, I, I didn't go to art college. I didn't go to college at all. Um, but I, I grew up in a very creative background. My mom was a fashion designer and my dad was a painter amongst other things, but both of them were lecturers in the NCAD. So I felt like when it came to leaving school and, and, and going on to third level education, it was just going to be an extension of what I had just lived with for 18 years. And I chose to run in the opposite direction and I chose uh, the school of life instead. Um, but what I love is that I, I still found myself um, in the same place that I probably would have if I had taken that um, more structured journey. Um, it just took me a little bit longer to get here. Um, in terms of my work and where it began um, with embroidery, it was uh, kind of the end of 2013, early 2014. I was living in California and I came back to Dublin um, after my father was diagnosed with Alzheimer's. Um, so I became his primary carer, which was all consuming, um, incredibly emotional. Um, and I think that's why I chose the, the theme of remnants for uh, my talk today, because really what I was doing and what I began doing when I came home in 2014 was I was I was picking up the pieces like I came back to a real shipwreck and I was trying to pick up the pieces and make sense of it. Um, the definition of remnants is um, the, the part or quantity that's left after the greater part has been used, um, removed or destroyed. And that's um, really what I felt was happening in my life and in my dad's life at that time. So um, I had to turn to, I felt very isolated. Um, none of my friends at the time were going through as they were going through different things, but not what I was going through. And I felt very isolated. We both did. Um, and I was forced to turn to art um, in the way that we all were taught to do as children. And I was especially taught by both my mom and dad, the importance of art and expression through art. But I think most adults lose that um, in their life journey because life becomes so chaotic and serious that we lose the kind of um, or we don't have the time to explore art and express ourselves in that way. Um, but at this point, I was desperate for um, release and I didn't know where to start. Um, so I kind of took what my mom and my dad did and I picked up a needle and a thread and uh, I started I started stitching. Um, so I guess I'll just start with some of my very early work, um, which was quite organic. For me, um, a, or an organic way to start, you can see that my stitches um, are not perfect. Nothing I, nothing I ever do is perfect. And that's the beauty of um, hand embroidery because ultimately I could get a, a machine to do any of this, but the beauty is in the mistakes. Um, and I think that goes for life as well as learning to accept those mistakes and, and they're part of, of the, bigger, the, the bigger picture. Um, so I started stitching um, words and sayings from my diary. Um, I'm in an unfamiliar space, life without storms. There's some wit, uh, damned if I do, damned if I don't, try, trying, tried, tired. Um, and the actual physical act of embroidery, it, it's quite time consuming and tedious work. So um, stitching something like the words, I'm fragile, you know, you could be there for two or three hours stitching it. Um, and subconsciously you're, you're repeating the words in your head over and over again. And it's almost like a mantra. And whether it be a negative word or a feeling or a positive one, by the time you're finished, you've almost said it so many times that you can you can let it go and you can release it once that piece is done. And um, that became so therapeutic for me. And where other people choose, you know, exercise or running or meditation, this became my my daily therapy and and a, and a daily must for me. Um, so I guess it was it was purely expressive at the beginning um, and and 
I didn't know where I was going with it. I wasn't planning on sharing it with anyone, but I guess that's the beauty of Instagram. Um, you can share it quite quickly with the world. Um, these again are some of my earlier stitches. You can see, um, you know, where I was learning and making mistakes. This is newer work, the waves and waves and waves. You can see that I've really tidied up my, my, my words and my stitches. And sometimes I choose to go back to a more fluid way of stitching, just the organicness of it. Um, there's something quite beautiful about it. Um, and then sometimes I was trying to reflect what I thought my father was feeling um, because with Alzheimer's, you lose the ability to communicate what you are experiencing. Um, and that happened very early on with him. So I had to kind of become a mind reader and I was, I was pretty good at it. I feel like for the years that we lived together in this house, we shared the same mind often. So it's, it was not just what I was feeling. It was what both of us were feeling and what we were creating within this house. Um, and that was, that was, um, that was important to me um to express for him um then I got into doing um this was the first kind of figurative work that I did um the swimmer um I turned to the sea during that time as a lot of people did during the pandemic um I think if you can brave the Irish sea year round and especially through winter you can pretty much brave anything um so she featured in my work a lot um she's she was a symbol of hope for me. Um, I felt very much at rock bottom and I needed something to help me to resurface, re resurface and swim back up to the top. So she comes in, in many um, shapes and forms. Um, this is me again in a, in a storm um, being blown. The fabric I used in this piece here, um, all my fabric at that time, I was I was literally going to my mom's house and robbing it. Um, I, I because she was a fashion designer, I was dragged and traipsed around fabric shops my whole life. So really, the purchasing of fabric is not enjoyable to me. So I like to be gifted fabric. I like to take fabric from people that I love, not take it, but be given it. Um, Cause I, I think used linens and fabrics already tell a story and there's already an art within the fabric, the stains. I, I think about the, the hundreds of cups of tea and secrets that have been spilled into the fabric. And it's really a work of art before I even get my hands, um, hands on it. Um, but yeah, the swimmer, the swimmer was important to me, her elegance, um, and I wanted her to be a symbol of hope for other people as well. So I eventually developed a little swimmer pin. I don't know if, if you've seen it before, but um, I sell her and the proceeds go to Pieta House, um, who deal with uh, suicide awareness and prevention. Um, but yeah, she, she just, she, she still features in my work. She's still someone that I revisit when I, when I need that, that hope and that comfort. Um, Next, I have a, just a quote by my favorite artist, Louise Bourgeois, which I'm sure you're all familiar with. Um, she, she's obviously a huge influence in my life, but that, that saying, I feel like I've proven to myself, it really, really did keep me sane, um, the, the act of art and the interest in art and the expression um, really kept me sane during, during that time. It, it was rough. It was very rough at times. Um, but yeah, yeah. Um, there are more, I've got some more pieces here that just examples of really my early work um, and the way that I stitch on, I'll stitch on almost anything except clothing. Um, I, I definitely don't want to go down that, that path. Um, this piece was just a silly piece I, I had done for a neighbor of mine. Um, it was a really torrential day in Dublin as we have often. And uh, I live in Rings End, which has this incredibly old fashioned community. And uh, I live on a street where they call themselves the originals. They were all born and reared on the street. So they've got great stories, but I was in a foul form and terrible form. And I was walking down the street and my neighbor Patty cycled past and he smiled and he said, liquid sunshine. And I just thought it was a brilliant way of looking at life. And, and I had to capture that moment. Um, but the community was, was a big part of, of this house and, and the safety that we had of the house. So I wanted to, to share a few images from um, inside my house. This is my desk, my workspace. Um, I've always worked from home. Um, what I do, my stitching, it all originated in this house in these four walls um, with my dad. And when we moved in together, um, 
I, I want I had all of his stuff and I, I really had to curate moments in my house to represent moments in his life um, to make it easier for him to revisit his past when his memory failed him. Um, so being surrounded by my dad's artifacts and my dad's memories and my dad's life is, is really a huge, important part of of my process. And I, I recently got a studio in town, which. I haven't quite accepted yet. I haven't moved in fully. I, I, not that I don't want to, I, I, or I'm scared to, I just can't imagine a, not having all of this and I'm not ready to bring all of this with me. So maybe I'm just not ready with, to leave this part of my life, you know, but I think it, for me, working from home has been uh, really important, important for me. Um, I've got some of my grandmother's embroideries in the house. This is one that my my dad's mum uh, had done, and my mum's mum was an embroidery artist as well. So I think the the actual act of of embroidery and working with textiles and linen um, it really runs through my DNA. I, I remember even the first time picking up the needle and thread to to start stitching. I, I knew how to do it already. Um, I wasn't particularly good at it, but I knew what I was doing and I knew I would be good at it. So I just, I just kept at it. Um, and I loved that she always framed her embroideries. Um, and I, I still get that question. And what, what do you do with the embroideries afterwards? Are they used as tablecloths? And I think, I think making sure that people see it as, as art and not just something that you drink your tea and coffee over is, is important because it's not just a craft for, the domesticated woman anymore you know it's it's for years and years been used as a form of protest with the suffragettes and I think people forget about that um history of of textile work and uh embroidery artists artists today are still kind of battling with that crafty aspect to the medium um but yeah I still live here I still live in in the house um and I love it. Um, I was just saying to um, Cleo and Kimberly earlier that working from home has been a joy for me. Um, but we all found ourselves during the pandemic um, at home a little bit too much. Um, and at that time, my dad was in a nursing home and that was pretty traumatic, um, struggling to um, cope with not being able to see him, going from seeing him every day and, and being separated from him um so even though i was trapped with all the things that i loved and all the things that i was inspired by um it caused a lot of turmoil and and that's where um this next piece um or series of work that i did um was born from notes to self um it's uh, sayings and scenes from my own recurring dreams nightmares and realities um where each piece was stitched during lockdown um i wanted people to get a glimpse into my life, um, a world of hope, love and loss, amongst other strange delights. Um, so I did a series of 24 embroideries um, that live in this little box. Um, I had them all 3D scanned and printed onto really beautiful textured linen paper. Um, I've got some of the pieces here that we can go through. Some are darker, um, quotes and sayings that I'd written and were replaying in my head and um, some are wittier some are quirkier um, I didn't really know what I was doing with them at the time um, but I, I just knew that I had I had to keep going um, so I'll just show you a few of those pieces um, a lot of them were to do with just what I was experiencing during the pandemic some were you know, remembering romantic moments in my life or quirky ways of, of reminding myself to keep going. Um, hopeful pieces, confusing pieces, calming pieces. Um, I couldn't get to the sea, um, so I had to stitch the sea uh, to bring me the sense of calm um, that I got from, from swimming um, to, to go from being able to do something every day. I think we all experience having that taken away from us. So we had to find ways of, of coping without those comforts. Um, but yeah, these are the actual embroideries. Um, 
I did them on giant sheets of fabric, which I still, I haven't had them framed yet. I don't know what I'm gonna do with them. If I'm gonna chop them up and sell them as mini embroideries or keep them as they are and keep them for myself, I, I really don't know. Um, and I didn't know at the time, even that I was gonna turn them into what I was, what I, what I turned them into in the end. But I think the reason I did what I did was um, I, I wanted people to have something um, that was accessible and that would bring them comfort. I, it's my own emotions in one little box. And when you open the box, it tells my story in, in a particular order. But my goal was for other people to rearrange the cards themselves and tell their own personal story, because I think universally, we all experience the same things and the same emotions, just in different order and at different stages in our life. And that thought alone has always brought me um, a lot of comfort and maybe why I'm an oversharer is because if you share what you're experiencing, someone else will say, oh, well, that happened to me. And that's that's where where the comfort lies in, in experiences and shared experiences. So some people have taken the cards and they'll take one out a day and that can be their mantra for the day, which I really like. Um, you can do whatever you whatever you want with them, really. Um, but that was what was born out of lockdown. Um, I'm going to show you another series that I did a long time ago. Remember to take your pills, the pills you take to remember, um, which again stemmed from a moment um, living with my dad. Um, he and I were both on antidepressants at the time. He was also on a large concoction of pills and medication that may or may not have helped his memory, but uh, you know, it was it was an adjustment and we all have had to go through these moments in life. So you have to turn something sad into something beautiful. And that's what that's what I tried to do with the pills. So I did a whole series of beautiful pills. Um, so this was, you know, a moment from living in Los Angeles, capturing a sunset um, in pill shape, making it easier to swallow what we were experiencing. Um, a lot of them will be architectural moments that I photographed in my journey. Um, my color palettes, I, I can take from anything, from scenes in, in movies and in films, uh, the, some of the old 70s gangster movies, there's great costume and I'll often draw my color palettes from the styling in films. Um, then some more lighthearted, scenic Connemara colors. Um, again, longing to be somewhere that we couldn't, what we were. Um, more abstract pieces. This is my family, my mom and my dad and my sister and I again. Um, but yeah, most of these pills live in, there's a series of them in the Devlin Hotel in Dublin, um, the Clarence Hotel in Dublin. But yeah, I haven't, uh, I haven't revisited the pills and hopefully I don't have to for a while. Um, next, I've got my birds, um, another common thread um, theme throughout my work. Um, this was my biggest piece and it took me three years to finish it, not because it was overwhelming or too hard, but it was just such a big piece that I wasn't used to and I wasn't sure or comfortable with the size of it. I didn't know if I wanted to make art that big because I, I guess I didn't see myself as that kind of an artist. Um, so it, it hung in my house for three years, um, half finished. I kind of, I think I did a bird a year, um, which is silly. Um, but I sat with it and I never knew when it was going to be done. But I think, I think this is it. This is it just yesterday. I finally had it framed and it's huge. Um, that's my dog, Mr. Blue. So that's it in my little doorway. Um, it's going into the RHA this year and it's kind of my, my first piece on that scale. And honestly, I think framing your work is the most exciting part of the whole journey and the whole process. Um, I love handing it off and I feel like it, it just transforms. The framers are artists themselves, what they can do to, to somebody's work. Um, so I'm looking forward to, to going bigger as well this year, um, doing more pieces on bigger scales for sure. But the birds are, are again, just something I always return to. Um, these are from a good few years ago, but these ones on the right um, were the first piece I did. I lost my dad a few months ago. Um, so this was the first piece I did after he passed away. I think a lot of people think about their 
loved ones coming back as robins but i really see my dad in in every beautiful thing it could be a blade of grass with the sun shining on it a certain way like that's my dad you know but that particular day he was a bird and i was a bird and this is him showing me the way and i think a lot of my work will always be about him and I think that's the beauty of of how I found myself was in his his losing his ability to paint and to to be an artist. Um, he gifted it to me, and I think that's kind of the most special part of what I do today. And I don't ever want to forget that. Um, but also just the 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 ability to recreate um, a bird in in thread is incredible. I think you can't really tell from these pictures, but with these ones, you really can create the texture of a bird. And I get such a thrill doing it. Um, these were some of my earliest birds. These were the first pieces I ever had framed and sold. Um, but you can see how I've, how far I've, I've come. Like these would be earlier, easy, simple but powerful pieces. Um, this is the latest bird that I did. This wing alone took seven hours and I did it all in one sitting because it was it was so exciting for me just to create that life because I you have to create the movement and the poetry of, of a bird's wing, you know? Um, but I, I get completely lost in the process. It's, um, some people find embroidery hellish, you know, working and, and, and the hunched over and the stitching and the repetitiveness of it. But I just, I love it. It just, I get so lost in it. Um, and it's taught me an incredible patience, um, especially when I first started doing it, I needed a lot of patience. I think taking care of someone with Alzheimer's, um, if you've done it, you know, you have to be an incredibly patient person. Um, and it's, it's a gift that I've, I can now incorporate into my my everyday life um, that that sense of calm um, and slowing down and accepting the mistakes and knowing that you can fix the mistakes and the beauty of the mistakes. Um, but yeah, the birds, the birds and the freedom of the birds and the movement. It's it's always I'm always going to return to them. Um, I've got a large body of work of birds that I'm I'm hopefully going to be showing soon. Um, then the next series I have um, was called Portals to a Better Place, um, hand embroidered portals um, to a safer space, a happier time, um, portals to a memory, I guess, um, the ability to transport yourself. I think we all probably did it during the pandemic, but I find myself doing it all the time um, with your imagination and 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 being able to escape what you're going through. Um, these pieces stem directly from these photographs and the sheer amount of photographs I took with my father. Um, this piece on the left um, is where I got the idea for the portals um, because I know from that photograph exactly what we ate that day, what we listened to, what we did, what our mood was. And I just wanted to recreate that in my work. Um, so these pieces, um, these portals I did um, for Claridge's Hotel in London, they commissioned me, my biggest commission to date, they commissioned me to do 35 pieces for their hotel. So all of these live within the hotel and I'm glad that they're all together. Um, but they're, I, I just took aspects of the hotel it's a, itself. It's um, got an incredible art deco theme running through it. So I took a lot of their art deco mirrors um, which amazingly um, come across in, in embroidery. It's, it's, the translation was perfect. I think geometric shapes and um, the, the mixture of that with the organicness that I tried to create within the portals. Um, sheer escapism, um, just from wherever you are to be able to transport yourself into a, a better memory or a more a happier time is, is what I tried to do. And I think, I hope I created that for people. Um, some of them are more playful. Um, these ones were my first, my first portals. Um, this one on the right in particular um, is all single thread embroidery. So single thread embroidery is so time consuming, but it's amazing the detail that you can capture and create. Um, 
these are two mirrors from within the hotel um, that I just recreated. And then I did a series of, of windows which weren't a part of the portal series, but I think that it can definitely be used um as escapism um windows to a better a better place um windows to a, a happier time or um taking you back to moments in architectural history so i did a lot of victorian arched windows with big exotic swag and velvet and golden tassels um because i don't feel like we pay attention to all those details so being able to uh recreate them in this photograph isn't that amazing but the 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 chain link that I tried to create in these and it's again to do that with a, a needle and thread is is so thrilling and exciting and tedious um I love I love getting lost in it and then when I'm not doing commissions I always turn to nature um physically walking in it I think I spend the first three or four hours of my day walking around with multiple coffees um, and, and sourcing my inspiration from my surroundings. But again, beautifully with, with embroidery, um, if you get the stitches down, you can create these um, poetic moments in nature that um, are so beautiful. Um, this is one that I finished just recently. Um, and again, I, my color palette just is reflective of whatever my mood is. Um, if I'm trying to calm myself, I'll, I'll use particular colors. Um, this one was a piece I did during the pandemic for my dad. It's the two of us, me, me reaching for him, trying to give him some of my life. Um, then I've got some older um, pieces here. This you can actually see from the stitches how different I work now so you can see technically how much I've I've advanced myself not that it's any better in the newer work but you can see that I really didn't know what I was doing at the time but I still love that I love the rawness of of how I used to stitch and I wish that I could go back to that whereas now I'm I'm very particular and slightly anal about my stitching if it's not perfect I'll start it over again whereas I was much freer back then um, again, like thinking back to childhood when we used to just scribble, we lose that ability to just be okay with it the first time around in life. And, and I think I'm constantly trying to remind myself that it's okay to, to go back there. Um, but I guess now I'm exploring more um, the technical side of embroidery and what I can create with um, the thread. So here I'm trying to create paint stroke stitches um, which again brings me incredible um, joy because it is so soothing. Um, I think it worked in this instance, but sometimes you really have to be careful with what your what your subject matter is because it's very hard to uh, to translate something into embroidery. You don't want it to to ever look too crafty or um, some things just don't work. You know. It, trying to embroider a, you know, my dog is impossible because I can't capture his personality, but you can create a, a movement with nature and with shapes. And that's what I'm, I, I do with these and the color palettes that I choose. Um, again, just more examples of um, nature. And um, this piece on the right was probably one of my most detailed pieces it took me 60 hours it's much bigger than it is in this photograph but it took me 60 hours to do that piece um which and I again loved every minute of it and then these pieces here are way more expressive it's just I there's no thought gone into the preparation of the piece I just sit down and I have to stitch and that's what I do I usually have um a stretcher bar ready to go for if I'm in a mood and I just need to get my therapy done. So that's what, this is what I would probably do in those moments. Um, I'm still exploring that work. I don't know where I'm gonna go with it if I want to continue with it, but um, it's purely expressive. Um, and some of it can be calming and some of it can be quite chaotic like this bottom right piece, you know? But I'm, I'm again, trying to perfect the paint stroke. Um, not that I, I want to be a painter. I remember my dad told me I should probably never be a painter because I wasn't particularly good at it. Um, but I'll try and paint in my own way. 
Um, I did try here to use paint. I don't think I'll continue doing it, but I think I created the cloud effect quite well. Um, but I'm not sure if I want to continue down that path of, of mixing the two, the two mediums. Um, but, but yeah, um, finally, I have these two pieces. This is the back of an embroidery, um, the lady on the right, which I sometimes think is as beautiful as the front of the embroidery. So I have a few pieces that I'm going to frame like this, where the back is the front, um, because it's exciting to see what goes on in the background. Um, it's kind of the chaos and the inner workings of her mind almost. Um, and she looks tough. I wish that I had framed her just as is, but I didn't have the time I had, I had, it was a commission for someone. Um, but I think, I think there is a beauty of, of seeing the back um, and, and the detail and what goes into to making it so picture perfect on the front and the right way around. Um, and then each of my pieces is finished with my signature, which I hand stitch, um, which I, contemplated stopping doing because it's so time consuming, but I think it's important. Um, and often I'm so anxious to finish the piece that my handwriting or my signature is the sloppiest part of the piece. Like it's almost like a child has scrawled it. This one's actually quite good. I've, I've shown a, a good example of my hand uh, signature, but it's, um, yeah, that's, that's the most exciting the most exciting part of the of the process. I just can't wait for it to be done to see the, the final piece. Um, but yeah, that's the kind of gist of the body of work that I wanted to show you today. A few different uh, moments in my life and how I how I got here and the journey I've been on. Um, I don't know if we have time for any questions, if anyone has any questions. <laughs> 